The Nifty Fifties watched our nation recover from the Second World War, and for Cardinals basketball, it was filled with firsts as the program moved into national prominence. In 1951, the Cards advanced to their first NCAA tournament and made their first national radio appearance. At the same time, Alan Freed electrified the airwaves and first coined the term rock and roll. Epics like Ben-Hur and the Ten Commandments, science fiction flicks like War of the Worlds, Hitchcock thrillers, and James Dean and Marilyn Monroe lit up the silver screen. The first NIT birth followed in 1952, and John Prudhoe earned his honorary doctorate by throwing down the first dunk in school history in 1953. Kids played with hula hoops, matchbox cars, Play-Doh, and Barbie for the first time in the 50s, as well as the first toy to be advertised on TV, Mr. Potato Head. Potato meat, Mr. Angry Eye. Five-star General Dwight D. Eisenhower followed Truman in the Oval Office, spending eight years in the White House and launching the interstate highway system and NASA. I am proud to do so. The 55-56 season was capped with an NIT championship. The CBS broadcast marked the first Cards game on national TV. Coach Hickman felt that two intangibles led to the success. The team wore their red uniforms in every game of the NIT and enjoyed the luxury of staying at Hotel Edison. We'll take it! Social change was in the air as UofL's campus was integrated early in the decade, an era that saw the historic Brown versus Board of Education decision and Rosa Parks' heroic stand. Johnny Unitas traded his Cardinals uniform for some NFL togs and was part of an amazing era of athletics, joining legends like Hank Aaron, Jim Brown, Gordy Howe, Pele, and Sugar Ray Robinson. Ooh, they're good. Good, good, good. On December 22, 1956, Charlie Tyre's 40 points led the Cards to a win over Notre Dame in the first Louisville game at Freedom Hall. And with over 1,500 season ticket holders in tow, the permanent move to the nation's premier basketball venue was made the following season. Bestseller lists were topped by The Chronicles of Narnia, Lord of the Flies, and Catcher in the Rye, while Ian Fleming introduced us to Bond, James Bond. The younger readers were enchanted by Theodore Geisel's Cat in the Hat and How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and Charles Schultz brought Charlie Brown, Snoopy, and the Peanuts Gang to life. More changes to the rulebook improved play as the one and one free throw was introduced. Offensive goaltending is banned and the lane was widened from six to 12 feet. Ooh, that'll help. By the end of the decade, most homes had a television, ushering its golden age with shows like Ozzie and Harriet, I Love Lucy, and The Honeymooners. Baby, you had a great. In 1959, the Cardinals advanced to their first Final Four falling to Jerry West's West Virginia team in the semis and Oscar Robertson's Cincinnati Bearcats in the consolation game at Freedom Hall, the second of what would be six Final Fours to be held at the fairgrounds. That same year, Alaska and Hawaii were granted statehood, completing the Stars and Stripes. The decade closed with eight more 1,000-point scorers, two All-Americans, and six players whose numbers are honored at the KFC Yum Center. And where would the program be without the NIT Championship MVP, Charlie Tyra? His number eight has been retired, and he still stands fourth in NCAA history in single season rebounds, ninth in career boards, and his single game school record of 38 caroms is 12th all time. A landmark decade for the red and black left their voracious fans hungry for more. Du, 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 du. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go home. Du, 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 du. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go home. I hate to leave you. I really must say, oh, good night, sweetheart. Good night.